worst crisis we'd ever faced in Virginia City. People were going hungry. The mines were shut down tight. They were flooded. I wrote to my son Adam for advice, and he came up with a solution. But when I got to Placerville, I found that the life-saving shipment he had sent and we were depending on had been stopped cold. Howdy. My name's Ben Cartwright. You told me back in town you'd impounded this wagon. That's right, I did. Well, uh, I've got to get those explosives through to Virginia City. They're perfectly safe as long as, as, long as they're handled carefully. I guess that's what the Wells Fargo folks in San Francisco thought. Huh? Ain't you heard about it? I heard about what? The explosion. In case of that stuff sprung a leak in the Wells Fargo office in San Francisco two days ago. The way they figure it, the agent tried to pry the lid off, see where the leak come from. Mr. Cartwright, there's a big hole in the ground where the Wells Fargo office used to be. When news of that leaks out, there won't be a man in California that'll drive that wagon for you. Well, then I guess I'll have to drive that wagon myself. I've got to get those explosives through to the mines of Virginia City. Oh, I can't let you move the wagon. Well, why not, man? I'm the one who'll be driving it. There's dozens dozen or so families live alongside that road out east of town. They'd stop you. And I wouldn't blame them. But what do you expect me to do with it? I expect you to get rid of it. Just how you do that's up to you. But you ain't bringing it into town. And you ain't taking it over any public road. Virginia City was depending on that nitroglycerin, and there was only one way left to deliver it. The Watson and Son pack train. I'd known the Watsons a long time. They were friends. Hey, little brother, what's the matter? It's all too much for you? Here, let me have it a minute. You gotta put your shoulder into it. Hey, got the idea? Yeah, I got the idea. I'll tell you, you keep it. You do the job yourself. And you'll be sure it's done right. Hey, Ellis, wait a minute. I'm only trying to help you. What's the matter with your brother? I'll be hanged if I know, Paul. I do my darndest to try to help him. He turns on me every time. Hey, Paul. I bet you two bits you can't saw through this pole without getting us all stuck. Son, you're mighty free with your money. You forgetting you already owe me a dollar and a half. Well, don't hurt yourself, old man. Pay up, or do I have to wrestle you for it? Well, now, suppose I wrestle you for it. Who are you going to get to help you? <laughs> hey, Eddie, don't hurt that old man now. <laughs> ben, you doggone old mushrat. How are you? Just fine, just fine. Doggone it, Ben. What are you doing around here? Well, uh, I thought you'd be home sitting with your feet in the fire, letting the kids do all the work. Oh, well, any day of the week that I can't outwork you, Clint Watson, you'll just let me know. You know, you sound just like Andy here. You're a bad influence on him, always have been. You look good, Andy. 
Thank you. Yeah, where's Ellis? I don't know. Probably got his nose stuck in a book or something. Yeah. We'll stay and have a bite with us. Andy here's a pretty bad cook, but we don't have too much trouble getting the doctor out. <laughs> you know, Ben, it's been almost a year. Well, you see, according to what Adam says here, he's contacted all the best engineers in Boston about this Nobel formula for making dynamite. And uh, as far as he's concerned, it'll work. I have no reason to doubt it. Is it as dangerous as they say, Ben? Oh, yeah, it's all that dangerous. More so if you happen to bump it around any. What do you know about it? Well, I read a couple of articles on it. Well, Alice is absolutely right. Of course, it's dangerous. But Adam says that he thinks it can be packed and packed safely. Do you uh, mind if I take a look at that, Mr. Cartwright? Sure. That kid will read anything, including other people's mail. Now, Clint, I'll tell you something. If I wasn't so sure, I'd say so. Sure, there's a, there's a big risk involved. But it can be done if we stay on top of it every second. Well, then I say we do it. You can't be any more explosive than uh, some of the whiskey we've hauled across the top of those mountains, right, Pop? Right, son. I'll tell you one thing, Ben. If anybody can do it, Andy here can. How many cases you say it was, Ben? Eight cases. Well, you better take four mules, two cases each pack saddle. Yeah, look, if we're going to tackle this, I think we ought to try to pack you it. You let your brother take care of that. And who said anything about you coming along? You've got to stay here and take care of the stock. No, I say we take Ellis along with us. I mean, after all, he's the only one of us Wassons who's an expert on the stuff. We can hire the Johnson boy to look after the stock. Anything you say, Andy. You got a deal, Ben. <laughs> well, good. I kind of figured I could depend on the Watsons. I'll bet you if I asked them, they'd tote the devil himself over the mountains. <laughs> <laughs> and see what happened to your brother. Mm -hmm. Well, there, I thought you were going to spend the winter in that pass. Oh, this mule and I just don't see eye to eye. You got to talk to him, little brother. You got to talk to him. You talk to him. Look, when we get down there, we'll switch mules. Maybe you'll have better luck with mine. All right, let's give it a try. Thanks, Andy. That's what big brothers are for. Ben, ever have the feeling that sometimes you fever one of your sons over another? Look, no, Clint, I guess there isn't a mother or father alive who hasn't had that feeling one time or another. I think the world of Ellis, it... sometimes I, I just don't know how to deal with them. Andy now, I, I never have to stop and think. I know every move he's going to make before he makes it. Now take it easy, Ella. All right. Well, so far, so good. Everything's as fine as a frog's hair. See what I mean, Ben?
Come on through, but be careful! Get him through there. You want to blow us all the kingdom come? Here, let me have it. I said, let me have it. Can't you do anything right? If all I kid, I see. If you want anything done right, you gotta do it yourself. I knew it would happen. I should never brought him along. Oh, come on, Clint, that's rough going. Mm. Alice, well, Paul doesn't mean to get round at you. But if this stuff's as dangerous as you say it is, you. You gotta be more careful. I mean, it's my idea of bringing you along. So, so don't make it rough on us, all right? You think I did that on purpose? Then you better take a look at this. We gotta get that broken bottle out of there. Behind a rock. No, no, just leave them alone.
He's got it. No, no, no. It's just part of it. Now he's got to get rid of it. Wet moss is just as dangerous as the nitroglycerin. What's he doing? He'll blow us all to kingdom come. No, no, he won't. Once that stuff's exposed to the air, it's supposed to burn itself out like kerosene. Dad, you might as well tell Ben we're going to camp here tonight. He says he thinks we should make camp here tonight. You're not going to get any argument out of me. That stuff ain't too close to fire, is it, Ben? No, no, I think it's just far enough away to keep it at an even temperature. I tell you, Ben, when you lit that match, I said, here we go, boys. The sun finally got to Ben Cartwright. <laughs> well, I can confess to you I wasn't exactly happy myself. How'd you know it'd work? Adam explained it in his letter. Well, I have the greatest confidence in my son, Adam. But as one father to another, I hope I'll be forgiven for having said a quick little prayer just to make sure that my older son knew what he was talking about. <laughs> what I can't understand, Ben, this stuff is that touchy. How is it going to be any better in the mines than that giant powder they're using now? They're going to mix it uh, with gun cotton. Now, that makes a, a, uh, a blasting gelatin. And this blasting gelatin isn't affected by water. So they can use it underwater or to blast wet holes. You just mark my words, Clint. Inside of a month, you'll see the biggest boom Virginia City's ever had. Man, can't you think of a better word than boom? <laughs> <laughs> You're pretty calm back there today, kid. I was proud of you. Well, I'll tell you the truth, Andy. I was scared. Scared? I was so scared, I thought my knees knocking together would set that stuff off. Is it really as dangerous as that article said? I don't know if you can really tell. Just anything's liable to set it off. Just like that. Altitude, temperature. Well, we're going to be moving into higher altitude. The temperature's going to drop pretty fast from now on.
Oh, where you at? You just wait here. I'll come back for you. Ooh. 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 I think I can take care of my own mule. I don't think you can take care of anything. Stop it! Alice, Andy! Stop it, both of you! Alice, what's the matter with you? Why don't you tell him to leave me alone? Leave you alone? It's a wonder he didn't blow us all up. I'll take it, Pa. You all right, Andy? I'm all right, Pa. I don't know what's the matter with that darn kid. I, I can't trust him. I never could. Oh, Clint, we're all getting a little edgy. Why don't you and Andy stop picking on him? Give him a chance. Why don't you raise your own kids? I'll raise mine. You boys better get busy. We're gonna need some more firewood. All right, Paul. Sure is a nip in the air. Temperature must have dropped 10 degrees since the sun went down. I'll be glad when we get over that summit. I'll be glad when we get to Virginia City. Clint Ben, I'm sorry I yelled at you, Ben. Oh, heck, Clint. <laughs> what are friends for? Those darn kids of mine. Yeah, I know. I've been through it a hundred times. I can imagine. Remember that time I was over the Ponderosa and Adam and Horse got in the fight? <laughs> over that cow pony. <laughs> It's when Hoss wanted to break that cow pony and Adam wanted to do it for him. <laughs> yeah. Remember the first time I, I brought my wife over? That was the first time we met little Joe's mother. She was a beautiful woman, Ben. Yeah, she was beautiful. Just didn't seem right her dying that way. Bessie and I talked about it all night after the funeral. Five months later to the day, Bessie died. She should never have had that second baby. Look, Clint, I don't think Bessie would like to hear you talk that way. I can't help it. I try, but I, I just can't do anything about it. I'll go on down to spring. Get us some fresh water. Hello, Hello Paul. Paul. Well, I'm sure glad to see you, boy. Glad you finally decided to meet us. Well, <laughs> we took off as soon as we got your message. As a matter of fact, we even left for breakfast. Yeah, he's been complaining about it ever since. I hope you got something to feed him. I'm tired of listening to him. Oh, we got plenty of good food back over here, but... Uh, at the risk of spoiling both of you, I am glad to see you. It's been a rough trip, huh? Yeah, you know that expression, sitting on a 
And a keg of powder? And what we've got is at least ten times as powerful. Well, you ain't got no worry from here on in. Little brother here can fix anything up. What'd you say that food was? Right over there. Go help yourself. <laughs> you too, Joe. Go have something to eat. I'm, right. I'm going to get some water. Last call for beer, Andy. Saloon's closing. Hoss Cartwright, I'd know that mule's voice anywhere. If you expect me to jump, you're going to be disappointed. <laughs> Boys, are we glad to see you. Oh, Hoss, you're you. looking mighty scrawny. Yeah. How you doing, Andy? <laughs> Little Joe. Hey, what's hey, what's hey, you're going to outgrow your brother another month or two. I doubt that. Here, let me take your horse and unsaddle him for you. I don't think to lay Hey, Hoss! Get up from there. Lazy <laughs> rascal. <laughs> Where's that girl? Rough up there on top of it. He's not a fool, and it's rough. That so called trail ain't much better either. No. Taking a chance on that kid coming down there. Uh, you go on back up there and get your brother's mule down there for him. He can make it, Dad, if we give him a chance. Let him do it on his own. Do as I say. Go up and get that mule. I, I deserve that poke in the mouth he gave me the other day. And no business yelling at you like that. Well, I got a little hot under the collar myself, Andy. <laughs> well, I guess we both did. Yeah. Now go on out of here. Hey, little brother. When we get to Virginia City, you and me are gonna go out and see the sights, all right? All right. I'll buy the first drink. That's a deal. Let's go. Stay away from me. Dad, I thought a lot of Andy, too. If it wasn't for you, Andy would still be alive. You killed him. Just as sure as you killed your mother the day you were born. 
Well, you finally said it, didn't you? I waited all my life for that. Well, you said it. Bessie died, I said that was all the hurt I was going to let myself take in one lifetime. We were more than just father and son. We were like brothers, like friends. I haven't even got anything to bury. You did this, Ben. You know that, don't you? Start unloading. Well, it's not gonna do any good. It's my fault. This accident is my fault. I thought I was doing something so important. Well, it isn't so important. Get rid of that stuff. Oh, wait a minute. Andy wouldn't put up with that kind of talk for a minute. You were right in what you were trying to do. We got a job to do, and we got to do it. A lot of folks are dependent on us. I'd hate to think old Andy died for nothing. just told me what happened. You know, sometimes, Ellis, a man will be hurt so bad and, and so doggone much shock, he'll say things that he'll beg forgiveness for the rest of his life. Well, I know that. Oh, that's the trouble. I always did know that. Andy told me about it a long time ago. The day I was born, when my mother died, Andy said that uh, Paul was out splitting rails. And when he heard that Ma had died, he just picked up his axe and started chopping wood. You could hear that axe going all night and all the next day. Well, he finally come home, Hoss. And when he did, he didn't cry, because he, he just didn't know how to. You know, I remember when I was a little boy, I was scared all the time, and I never, I never knew what of. Well, that doesn't matter. I know I wanted my dad to hold me and hug me. Well, he just laughed, you know. He said that was for little girls, not boys. Well, that's just not true. I still remember how I'd feel when, when he wouldn't. Hoss, you know what I mean. I mean, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, sure I know what you mean. I understand. At the same time, I can understand you, Paul, a little bit too, Ellis. He was hurt bad. I reckon he just couldn't let himself go because he didn't want to get hurt worse. Well, then why didn't he give me a chance? You know, I wanted to prove myself. I wanted to I try to do something to prove myself. That's part of love, too, you know, trying to live up to what someone expects of you. Yeah, I understand. Sometimes it takes a man a long time, though, to realize it. Well, 
Well, Ellis, we're going on. You going with us? Well, I don't suppose Andy would let you go on along, would he? Ready to go. You sure you brought mule trains this way before? Yeah. But not loaded with what we're packing. What do you think, Pa? I don't think we better risk it. I think we better unload right now and see if we can figure out some way of taking it over by hand. You know, I think I got an idea that might work. I'm fine. I just, just got to catch my breath. Well, I'm glad there's only one more left. Hey, you're not the only one. Well, I'm not going to get it done standing here. Won't you let me go get this one? Oh, that's a great idea. Then I'll pull you up the hill, right? Yeah, that would yeah, be great. Yeah, <laughs> Take it easy. Okay, pull on up. 
Told you to be careful, you blame knucklehead. Thank you, boy. Thank you. Andy couldn't have done it any better. and two engineers from the mine. I'll tell you one thing for sure, son. I'm not the least bit sorry to hear that. Sure is good to get back to home country, ain't it? Why, are you hungry? Naturally, I'm alive, ain't I? <laughs> Come on, let's get this stuff out to him. Here, I'll take it, Bob. Easy. Right. Ben. But what happened back there? I guess I went to pieces. Well, you had every right to Clint. This is a young man's game. I'm just not any good for this business anymore. Well, what are you going to do without pack trains like yours? We need them this part of the country. Comes a winter time, the roads are all clogged up with snow. A pack train like yours, life or death for people. Well, they'll have to get along without me. I can't do it anymore. I don't know of anybody to replace you. You forget, don't you, Ben? I got another son. Yeah, so you have. Doggone it, you're still the best looking gal I ever saw. You ain't as young as you used to be. And, uh, 
set of legs like them, they ain't nobody gonna pay no attention to that age. Big moody eyes, that little turned up nose, and shiny black hair, and a big black bushy tail. Don't go let you quit worrying so much anyhow. <laughs> Old Jim ain't gonna let him take you away from here. I got work to do. I can't stand here complimenting you all day. Hey, Jim. Didn't expect you back this soon. How'd the trial turn out? I didn't wait to find out. You didn't? Jim, you mean you just got up and walked out? Yeah. Too close and stuffy in that courtroom for me. You feel the same way, don't you, old gal? Hmm? There. Go and visit your friend. Come on. <laughs> you know, Jim, that, that judge could rule against you. Regardless of how he rules, Whipple is not going to get that mare. And that's all that counts. Look at her, will you? She's got a secret we don't know. <laughs> She's sure in fine shape. Why don't you give me a fine coat? She's done that quite a few times. Sure I have. She's getting to be an old lady, though. This is the last coat she's going to have. It's going to be the most special coat in the world. You know that niece of mine I told you about over in Grass Valley? Well, I ain't never met her, of course. I feel like I know her, the way you've talked about her the last 15 years. I guess I do talk about her quite a bit. Well, she has a little boy, three years old. A boy at that age ought to have a cold of his own. I'm gonna take the mare over to Grass Valley. I wanna be with her when the cold is born. Let me do the talking. It may not be what you think it is. Hey, Mr. Wubble. Howdy, Hodge. What brings you out this way, Peach? You doing a little lectioneering? I'm always doing that, especially in enemy territory. This time I'm here on official business. Should have stayed around, Acton. The judge handed down his decision five minutes after you walked out on him. Pete, how'd it turn out? Here, read it. You read it, Hoss. The judge awarded the mayor to Mr. Wilkins.
had your day in court, you both had your say. Now, the mayor belongs to Whipple, and that's that. You all know the mayor belongs to me. I made a deal to buy a bunch of wild horses from you, and the mayor is part of the herd. That mayor was never part of the herd. And you know it! Oh, wait, come on, Jim! Hold it, hold it! Come on, Jim! That's not what the judge said. Jim, come here a minute. You're hard to hit I got a plan. Just calm down a minute. Look, Pete, I ain't got no money on me, and I, I know Jim ain't. But maybe we could go get Paul and buy the mare back, huh? Well, I'd say that's up to Whipple. She's not for sale. I'm keeping her for myself. Whipple, you touch that bear, I'll kill you. How about it, Sheriff? The law say I got a right to collect what's mine? That's what the law says. Give me a rope. All right, she's all yours. That's all I ask. wrong way to do everything, and you're trying to do it the wrong way. And I guarantee you we'll get this all settled. That's good advice, Jim. I'm warning you. Let it be. Well, that's that. Now that I'm up here, I might as well see your dad. Do a little campaigning. I don't think it'll do much good, Pete. He's gonna support old Roy. Well, that's exactly why I want to talk to him. No sense wasting my time and all those good folks I already know are gonna support me. <laughs> want to ride along? No, no, thank you, Pete. You find Paul at Spencer Canyon. You know how to get there. Yeah. Stick around here, though, Jim. All right, suit yourself. Yeah. I'm not going to give her up. Now, look, Jim, don't you start nothing here. You let me handle this. I'll talk to Paul, and we'll get her back. When? That mare's been with me for 18 years. She's not just another piece of horse flesh for a whipple to trade off. Look, Jim, you go on back to the house and stay there. I'll go find Paul, and we'll figure out something. I got to get her back. Do you understand? Yes, Dad Brennan, I understand. <laughs> I don't need the gun, Mr. Whipple. I'm not looking for trouble. I just want to talk to you. Don't start anything, Acton. You already lost one lawsuit. You lay a hand on me, I'll swear on a warrant. Be reasonable, Mr. Whipple. To you, a horse is just a horse. Well, that's your business. With me, it's different. It's over and done with. I know you got a good market for those uh, wild horses I round up. I'll ask Ben Cartwright to give me some time off. I'll get you 50 head. That's five times as much as the mare is worth to you. Is it a deal, Mr. Whipple? I said it's over and done with. Come on. Don't pull on her that way. Let go of that rope, Acton. She's not used to being treated that way. Well, she better well get used to it. Better be nice to you. Ah, you go get yourself that warrant. But like I told you before, we're not taking this mare.
All right, old girl. Let's go home. I'm not going away so soon, old girl. But I just can't understand a judge handing down a decision like that. Jim always used that mare for rounding up his wild horses. Everybody knew that. Well, why did Jim have to beat up on Whipple in the first place, and then on top of that, get up and walk out of the court room? Because he thought he could get away with it. Well, there's no point in talking about it. As soon as Sam Whipple gets over being mad, I'll offer him such a good price for that mare, he'll sell it back. He better. Boy, Jim carried on. You think that was the only mare in the country? Well, he always was kind of a strange one anyway. Boys, take them horses, put them in the breaking corral. Cartwright? Thought much about the election? Well, uh, yes, yes, people. Yes. Matter of fact, I have. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You know, uh, a lot of people are backing me, Mr. Cartwright. Influential people in town, men that you know and respect. Well, I appreciate that, uh, Pete, but uh, I think Roy Coffey's made a, made a fine sheriff for us. Oh, well, sure, but times change, and Roy's getting a little bit too old to change with him. Huh? Now, what I plan to do is reorganize... Hasn't anybody told that brother of yours that there's other ways of riding a horse except at a dead run? Well, Sam Whipple. I found him dead alongside the road near Big Fork. He'd been shot. Did he have Jim Acton's mare with him? No, just his own saddle horse. Joe, riding to town. Tell Sheriff Coffey to me this is Big Fork. Right. I can handle this myself, Mr. Cartwright. Yeah, I'm sure you can, but Roy is still our sheriff. felt about that mare and knowing how outdated he was, I should never have left him here alone. I still say Jim's no killer. Whipple must have pulled a gun on him or something. He had to have a good reason. I mean, Jim should have should have known that I could have bought that mare back for him. Seems to me you're wasting an awful lot of time. It seems to me you're awfully anxious, Pete. I'm not in the habit of feeling sorry for killers. Pete's right. There's no sense of giving him any more of a head start than he's already got. I can handle it alone if you want me to, Sheriff. I can bring him in. How? Draped over a saddle? Like you brought in the last three? I did my job, didn't I? Roy? Boys and I know this part of the country pretty well. He wants to ride with you? Just fixing to ask you, Ben. I never thought I'd see the day I'd be out chasing a friend with a rifle. You don't want him to get away with it, do you? See him get shot, neither do you. That's a question you didn't have to ask.
here, girl. I'm going to make it as easy on you as I can. She hadn't done that, Ben. When you chase a man that's just running, that's one thing. But when you chase a man that's turned around and bushwhack you... Oh, Roy, come on, don't be silly. You don't want to hit something, either hit it. Jim Acton's the best rifle shot I know. close to home as I ever got. Frank! Yeah, Pete? Flank him on the right side. All right, Pete. They'll never find old Jim up there, Joe. Yeah, well, maybe that climb will cool Pete off a little bit. Yeah, like this. Remember the time we thought we had that old stallion trapped up there and old Jim rode up? Yeah, I remember he started laughing at us. Said that old stain and let us think we had him trapped, and while we were breaking our necks climbing up there, he'd sneak out the back way. Yeah. Hey, Joe. You thinking what I am? You bet I am. Now, where in the devil they think they're going? Jim. That was a rock you heard over there. It's the oldest trick in the world, Joe. Now I'm sorry I ever taught it to you. How are you, little Joe? That's the second oldest trick. We'll shake hands later. You too, our huh, horse. I should have known. You got to thinking about that stallion we thought we had trapped up there that time? That's right, Jim. You boys have long memories. You gave us a lot to remember, Jim. Yeah. We had good times together. And yeah, we're gonna have a lot more as soon as we get this mess cleaned up. Look, Jim, Paul and us know as well as we're alive that you didn't just shoot Whipple down for no cause. What happened back there? A man shoots at you, you shoot back. You have no time to think. We can understand that, but now you've had time to think. That's right, Jim. Think about that niece. You told us how much she thinks of you. How's she gonna feel having a fugitive for an uncle? I thought about it. Then you come on back with us now. I've been thinking about that stallion we... We try to trap up there. I know how you are, horse. 
I know that heart of yours. And you're still a little Joe. You don't show it, but uh, you're just the same. That stallion. Even if we had caught him, neither one of you would have put a rope around him. You knew he had to be free. Dad buried Jim. We, we can't let you go. Try to make it easy on everybody. Didn't take his rifle. Plan on letting him escape? Well, you can step aside now. I'm taking him. Are you real sure you can handle it, Pete? Yeah, I'm real sure. I'm no particular friend of his. Tired. Can we rest here a little while, please? All right, I guess all the horses can use some rest. Go ahead. Yeah. I talk with him? You sure can, Ben, but I don't think it's going to do you no good. He's a drifter. He's born to it. And that kind of man just don't change. Frank, treating that killer like he was something special. Hmm, maybe that's because they've been friends for a long time. I sure don't like the way Roy's listening to those Cartwrights. For all we know, they could be planning on letting him escape. Oh, Pete, I find that kind of hard to believe. Well, then don't believe it. But I know my obligation to the law, and I know I don't want to get myself killed the way Whipple did. Now, you can follow my lead or string along with Roy. It doesn't much matter which. From now on, you better watch your back. Well, the way you tell it, Jim. Sam Whipple, uh, that was self-defense. That's the way it was, man. But he's going to believe it. Well, I do, for one. Thanks. But you won't be on the jury. What chances a drifter like me got? Same chances any other man would have. I'm trying to give you some good advice, Jim. Will you take it? Depends what you expect me to do. Number one, I expect you to stop trying to stand up against the world alone. Number two, I expect you to go back there and face the music. And let them lock me up? Look at that. Beautiful sight, isn't it? Yeah. It's real beautiful. I've told you more than once, you can have a piece of it if you want to settle down. Never could, Ben. I get an itching, and I gotta move. Even country like that, you hold your fingers up like you're looking through bars, and you can spoil it. You won't listen, will you, Jim? You're going to run again. I have to. I'm afraid the only end to it will be a, a bullet. It's the idea. Just removing the temptation. You think that was necessary, huh? I think so. You looked at the sun lately? Yeah, I've seen it. Well, if we hang around here much longer, we won't be back before dark. 
You like herding prisoners after dark? No, I don't. That's why we're staying overnight at the Ponderosa. You're sort of treating him like a guest, aren't you? A guest of the Nevada Territory. And you aren't even going to tie him up. Now, there's six of us and one of him. That's pretty fair odds, isn't it? <laughs> well, now that you mention it, I guess it is. something. Last trouble you're gonna cause me. You put that gun down! Broken leg, Ben. I have never hurt a horse in my life. You did it, Jim! Oi! Trust me with a gun. Go ahead, Ben. That's that gun I'll blow you into. There's an unwritten law around here. A man takes care of his own horse. Mister, I don't go by unwritten laws. That's one thing a man never gets used to, Ben. Jim, just answer me one question. What makes you so dead burn hard-headed stubborn? Something I gotta do, horse. Well, fine, but you keep throwing stunts like the one you just pulled, and it's gonna make your case even rougher for you. Besides, whatever you got to do can't be so important, it won't wait. Not so, Hoss. You know that niece of mine I've been telling you about? She's not my niece at all. She's my daughter. And her little boy is my grandson. Well, I'll be doggone. That's why after my wife died, I... I thought it would be better if I left my daughter with my brother and his wife. They've done a good job raising her. Much better than I would have done. She thinks I'm her uncle. Better this way. She knows I break horses. Work on a ranch. Drift. Sweet girl. I used to hold her on my knee and tell her all kinds of stories. Oh, Jim, you. You got a lot of good living to catch up on as soon as you get out. I'm already out. I'm 
I'm going to stay that way. Boss, a man's got a right to give his grandson a present, hasn't he? I'm going to give him a coat. I'm going to take the mayor across the mountains. Nobody can do it for me. This is something I got to do for myself. You understand, horse? Yes, and that's just the trouble. And knowing you the way I do, I understand you. I knew you would. All right, Jim, it's time to go. You can take the saddle off that dead horse and put her on your mare and ride her back. Come on. I think I'll tie his hands. We got a lot of rough country between here and the ranch. How's he gonna ride with his hands tied? Just don't trust him, that's all. Oh, come on, Pete. That mare he's owns 18 years old. He's gonna outrun somebody? Well, all right. If anything happens, you cockroach are responsible. Remember that. You let him escape. You deliberately let him escape, and you said that mare couldn't run. Well, I didn't think she could. You didn't think. Ben, I've gone along with you as far as I could, but deliberately let him escape. Now, Roy, this escape. is not deliberate. Now, don't yell at me. You've been more of a hindrance than you have a help ever since we started. Well, would you look who's talking? It was your idea to bring these Cartwrights along, not mine. Well, they've had you in their pocket ever since the day you were elected. Well, I'll have a lot to tell when I get back to town, and Frank here will back me up. Make up your mind to it, old man. You're through. Maybe your, uh, your friends, the Cartwrights, will give you a little piece of ground to build a cabin on. Now, I'm taking over. Ben, I'm, I'm sorry I lost my temper. Roy, if you let Pete take over, man's life will be at stake. He's not taking over. Did you see that beautiful old gal play that fence? Yes, I saw him. Try to lose us in them rocks. If he gets over the top of that hill and into the woods on the other side, we'll never get him. I'm gonna take Frank and cut him off. We're waiting for him when he comes over the top. Yeah, there's a trail that goes around the other side. Go ahead, Pete. going to blame you for getting old, girl. But ten years ago, you would have carried me over the top of that hill like you had wings. Angel wings. The 
It appears like the mayor gave out on him. No, she didn't give out. He just doesn't want to cripple her in the rocks. Hey, Pa? Huh? I've been thinking what you, what you said about the trail. There was a big landslide up there last winter. There ain't no way for Pete to get around that way. I know. in on them now. Doggone it, Joe. Word was right in and wrong again. All he ever wanted to be was free. Look at him now. Breaking his lungs and his heart. Just like that, that wild stallion I chased. Run him plumb into the ground. When I finally caught him, I, I couldn't more put a rope around his neck and I could rise and fly. Come on. I want you to understand, it's me they're after. But I don't want you to get hurt. You go back with the herd. I'll take care of you. And uh, you give me a fine call, do you understand? I'll come back to see you in the spring. Never make it through there? Yeah. Those cartwrights, they knew that slide was there. Come on. You look at that, she's gonna try to climb it with him. Paul, that mare will kill herself. The mayor won't make it, but Jim will, and I can't let that happen. Wait, wait, Roy. Let me try something. Jim! Jim! Look behind you! The mayor! Go back, Earl. Go back! Go back. Go back, Earl. You can't climb up there. You'll hurt yourself. Go on back! Go on! Jim! Jim! Come on down, Jim! that cold? Go on back. Hey, Jim. Jim! I can't promise you anything, but the boys and I will help you all we can. You know that. Jim, you're going to kill that mare. Son, what you want to do, Jim? Kill her! Is that what you raised her for, to see her kill herself? Is a dead mare the kind of present you want for that grandson, Jim? Grandson? Yeah. You know that niece he's always talking about? Yeah? It's his own daughter. Go on back, girl. Go on. Please go back, will you? You want to go back, do you? Well, I can understand that. You've been with me all your life. All right. I go. 
favoritem. I guess you're more important than I am. You always did know how to get the best of me, didn't you? <laughs> All right, come on. It's coming down, Roy. He was right out where he could have got a shot at you. He didn't even have a gun. Just a mistake. I've always been a good deputy, Roy. Hoss, listen to me, Hoss. We've always got along together. Oh, but... Pete. Little Joe, look. Jo left in you, too. Yeah. You have a nice, pretty cold fruit, Jim, here. I hate to leave you pinned up in here, Dad, and burn it, but if I let you go, you'll run back out there in them wild ones. I gotta know where you are. Paul, Joe. Huh? Turn her loose, Hoss. Let her loose? Oh, Paul, I never would catch her. I gotta take her up to Grass Valley tomorrow. Well, I, uh, I got a letter from Jim's daughter. A letter? I'd like to read you part of it. It says here, uh, my uncle was always a free man, Mr. Cartwright. And I want to remember him that way. I know how much he loved that mayor. And how he always thought of her as something as free as himself. I was never able to do much for him when he was alive. I want to do something for him now. I want you to turn his mare loose. spring, when that herd comes back to the high country, that mare's gonna have a little black coat to show up. <laughs> yeah. And I'll bet you I know a little grandson that's gonna make mighty happy, too. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, let's go home. Yeah. yeah. 
going too fast. Gwillem, if you had been watching your driving instead of thinking of Essie, this wouldn't have happened. It wasn't his fault. The horses ran away. Uncle Evan, you can't blame Gwillem. It was just an accident. You're to blame for this. Evil has stalked this train ever since we were foolish enough to bring you with us. Emma, that's enough. You've gone a bit too far. You defend her only because she's your niece. The daughter of Satan, Evan, I've told you before. Mark my words. Satan rides her shoulder like a dark cloud. You must decide about her. Howdy. Would you be the uh, Reverend Morgan? I am not an ordained minister, but my flock are pleased to call me Reverend. I uh, heard you folks were crossing the truckie around here. Oh, my name is uh, Cartwright. Ben Cartwright. I, uh, I own this, uh, this land. Oh, we're going to be tied up here a couple of days. As you can see, my wagon has been broken down. You need not be concerned, Mr. Cartwright. We'll pay you for the time that we're here. No need for that. This uh, wagon could sure use some fixing. So maybe my boys and I can help you with it. The eternal brethren take no charity, sir. I'm sorry, what's that? The eternal brethren. We are the people preparing for the last conflict with Satan, the prince of darkness, who all men must meet someday. Oh, I see. Well, uh... If you need some water, there's a spring fed pond just beyond those trees there. And if we can help you with anything, how's it just east of here? Mr. Cartwright. Our cows have gone dry, and there isn't any milk at all for the children. Could you. I mean, would it be possible. Sarah, you're interfering again. We don't have uh, many milk cows, ma'am, but uh, I'll be glad to see what I could do. Thank you. You're very kind. How many times does the Reverend have to tell you we cannot accept charity? No, Emma. She was only trying to help the children. Haven't we suffered enough already because of her? You blame me because the cows ran dry. So I'm trying to do something about it, and you still blame me. No matter what, you always find fault. <laughs> I'll see that you get some milk by morning. Thank you kindly, sir. About this earth we live on. 
First of all, we have to change our idea that the world is flat. In truth, it is round and shaped like a ball. That's not what the Reverend told us, Miss Sarah. Well, even the Reverend doesn't know everything. <laughs> now, children. <coughs> a little more half brethren it wouldn't hurt to say a prayer as we put our shoulders to it. <laughs> Heaven, Evelyn, <coughs> you couldn't listen to me before. Now maybe you will. There's something you must see. Emma, I'll join you as soon as we get the wagon upright. No, no. This is more important than any wagon. Come along. Oh, all right, Emma. Remember, brethren, the right prayer can increase your strength tenfold. Come along. If you start here and you go around long enough in the same direction, you wind up in the place you started from. Yes, Thomas. Why don't we fall off when we walk underneath, Miss Sarah? Because of a force called gravity. What does gravity look like? Gravity is something we can't see. But we know it's a great invisible force that keeps us all here on Earth. Some of you know what a magnet is, don't you? I yes, do. I do. Well, then let's think of it like that. Gravity could be called a kind of magnet. It's a natural force that keeps us all from flying off into space. We were always told that the world is flat. You were told right. Don't listen to her. I've been patient with you, Sarah. Lord knows I've been patient. But now your words have revealed you. The law of gravity was discovered by Sir Isaac Newton in 1687. That's almost 200 years ago, Uncle Evan. But there is only one law. The law of God. If our divine maker had meant for us to walk upside down, he would have put feet on our hands. <laughs> Children, listen to me. Look around you. All around you. As far as the eye can see, the earth is flat. Now, you see it that way. Because that is the way the Lord intended for it to be. Anything else is heresy. Well, there's that wagon I was telling you about. Yeah, I already had that spotted. Well, little brother, you feeling up to helping me get that wagon back on its wheels? Well, I'll give you a hand, horse, if you really think you need me. Let's go. But, Uncle Evan, Columbus proved the world wasn't flat by sailing around it. If he was sailing upside down, the water would have emptied into the sky. Why can't you accept it? It's a proven scientific fact. Sarah, what you speak is heresy. Our divine maker intended us to walk upright, not upside down. We've had enough of this scientific nonsense of yours. School is over. From this moment on, you will no longer corrupt our children's minds. But the children need me. Not anymore, they don't. Uh, uh, the uh, boys and I, we brought, uh, brought the milk, and the uh, boys are working on the wagon now. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. On behalf of the children, I thank you kindly. Where would you like us to put it? Uh, I've already accepted more than I should. I'll take care of it. Thank you. Oh, don't jump so, Essie. I was just looking at myself in the water, Miss Sarah. <laughs> Well, every girl likes to see herself sometime. Miss Sarah, do you think Willem likes me? Of course he does. But I'm not very pretty. You most certainly are. This is the last thing I saved from St. Louis. And even if no one else could see it, I knew it was there. And it made me feel pretty. The next time Willem comes to court, you pin it on your petticoat. If a girl feels pretty, she is pretty. Thank you, Miss Sarah. No, don't 
doctor. <laughs> Let me drive you away. <laughs> May I? Oh, please. be very puzzled by us. Yes, I am. Although I, I must say, I'm a little more puzzled by you. You don't seem to belong with them. I do. And I don't. You see, I was born and brought up among the brethren. My father was... Uncle Evan's brother. I've been away for several years. Now that I'm back, I... I just don't understand them anymore. My uncle is turning those children's minds back into the Dark Ages. Is that why you stay with them? Because of the children? That's one of the reasons. The others don't matter. And uh, what are you going to do now that they've forbidden you to teach the children? I don't know. But it's just so wrong of my uncle to fill those children's minds with ignorant superstitions. They'll be like nomads running away from change, from anything they don't understand. Oh, sometimes I wish I'd never left St. Louis in civilization. Oh. Um, you know, we, uh, we have a town close by here called Virginia City. Oh, it's a, it's a small town. But it's kind of civilized. It has restaurants, and maybe we could have lunch there. Like uh, today, maybe right now. Would you like that? Yes, I would, Mr. Cartwright. I'd like that very much. Good. Uh. How's it going down there, little brother? Well, better than they got coming, considering all the help they're giving us. Yeah. Well, they're all over there in a meeting of some sort. Hey. Come on, let's get this wheel on here and get out of here. There's a gym dandy of a little rainstorm coming. You about ready, ain't you? Yep. I'm as ready as I'll ever be on an empty stomach. Ain't this something? <clears throat> Been working out here for hours and... Nobody's even offered us a drink of water. No food, nothing. You reckon they'll even be polite enough to thank us? I wouldn't count on them. Hey, what do you suppose they're doing over there? Hey, uh, hey, friend. Friend, what, what are you painting on the wagon there? These are shields against Satan and his disciples, as any fool can see. Oh, Satan, huh? And his disciples. Well, uh, just who might they be? Not they, her, the daughter of darkness. Oh, and uh, is this daughter of, uh, of darkness have a name? Of course, Sarah. Mrs. Reynolds, the one your daddy was fool enough to take to town with him. Hey, what do you think of that, Hoss? Huh? Pa's taking a fancy to a witch. Sure enough. Source. 
us now. Satan's fire. Go back to your source. Satan's fire. Leave us now. Satan's fire. Go back to your source. Now. Poor Satan's fools, they, they ain't never seen a single old fire before. Just a little extra electricity in the air. Well, even if they did see it before, they still think it's the work of Satan. Cursed woman brought it here. But no more. Hear me now. Bring no harm to my flock. The fire is gone. We have been given our answer. It is a sign from above. Come on, let's get out of here. This is Mr. Cartwright. I'm so glad the storm came up and we had to stop here. Well, I think it's just a passing storm, but I'm glad it came up too. Well, I'm glad you approved the house, Mrs. Reynolds. Please call me Sarah. Well, I will if you call me Ben. Then Ben it is. Then, Sarah, it is. <laughs> oh, you're, you're chilled. Well, just a little bit. Is there some place I could um, freshen up? Oh, of course. Um, well, there's a guest room right up at the uh, head of the stairs. Oh, thank you. I'd get some coffee and tea ready. Which do you like, coffee or tea? Well, well, how about some? How about some sherry? No. The... Sherry might be lovely. Good, good. I'll start the fire. You know, it's a remarkable thing. What's that? Only one short day. And I feel we're very old friends. Well, we are old friends. Charming you look. Thank you. It's been a long time since a man said that to me. That's true. You're charming.
Sarah. You said something about Sherry. Yes, I guess I did. Now you sit right down there. Thank you. And there is the Sherry. this much in months. Mm -hmm. How I envy you. This is a wonderful home. Thank you. That's comfortable and warm. Because sometimes it's uh, a little lonely. Yes. I know what loneliness is. My husband died five years ago. Don was a doctor. We'd made great plans for ourselves and our son. You have a son? Little John died when he was two years old. Then my husband died. I was all alone. No place to go. Going back to the brethren was like going home in a... in a way. Oh, but let's not spoil a lovely day by getting into all of that. How's your sherry? Oh, fine, thank you. Do you know something? I'm hungry again. So am I. <laughs> Isn't it ridiculous? After that huge lunch we had in town. I'll tell you something else. You are not talking to the man who makes the best Welsh rabbit in the territory of Nevada. Oh, really? Oh, yes. It sounds divine. I hoped it might. Can I do something to help? Yes. Enjoy it. <laughs> Come on. Madam? Sir? To the kitchen. John, what's the matter? I don't know. I have this terrible pain. Better get you in the wagon. What's this? What is this? It's something Sarah gave me. Sarah gave it to you? Sarah? To make me pretty for Gwillem. It's nothing. It's... It's a love charm. That's what it is. A love charm? What's wrong with her? She's devil struck. That woman you've been listening to, I've tried to warn you about her. I was wrong, Em. I should have listened to you. Heaven, there's only one thing to do now. I know. It shall be done, even though Sarah is of my own blood. It shall be done. The evil spirit will be driven out of her. I say it. I say it. <laughs> so you've never been to Wales? No, never. Then where'd you learn to make such delicious Welsh rabbit? From my Chinese cook. <laughs> How is she? She's dying, Willem. I'm going for Sarah. Willem. You know where to find her? I think so, yes. Then bring her back here. Bring her back here. Uh, 
Ivan. What's wrong? It's nothing. Gwilym has gone for Sarah. He's going to bring her back here. We must be ready. Remember the fire, Satan. It showed us the way. The old way. Kindle a need fire. Have the brethren collect the juniper wood. Linen for tinder. Put out all the other fires. The need fire must burn alone and pure. It will destroy her wickedness. Or she herself will be forfeit. Be about it, Emma. What are you going to do now? I don't know. I haven't any life except for the brethren and the children. Sarah, how long are you going to try to replace your lost son with someone else's children? Wait, sir, is Miss Sarah here? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Willem, what are you doing here? Miss Sarah, it's Essie. Your, your uncle says she's dying. But how? What's wrong with her? It's some kind of sickness. She was fine this morning. It happened all of a sudden. Please come, Miss Sarah. She needs you. Of course, I'll come at once. I'd like to get back to her. If you don't mind, I'll ride on ahead. Please hurry, Miss Sarah. Yes, William. Now, look, there's got to be somebody out there who could look after her. Essie needs me, Ben. Get the buckboard ready. Daughter of Satan out into the wilderness. Me, Ben. They're driving me out. Is anybody else sick? You've got to get a doctor here. Miss Sarah. They hurt you, Gwilym. You've got to get away from here before they do what they're planning. Well, what about Essie? The witch is here. The witch is here. Morgan. Morgan! will not be harmed, only the devil within her. Morgan, let her be. You laid your curse upon Essie. No! The 
cholera is here. Yours is the evil. Oh, no. I can help you. It doesn't have to touch all of you. Don't bargain with me, Satan. That's what was wrong in Oriana, don't you see? You and Essie, you went to town. You must have drunk some of the water, did you? Take her. No. Listen to her. Don't try anything we're determined on this. Don't, Ben. Speak the word. Speak. I'm ashamed for you. For all of you. Right be on our side, Sarah. Morgan, don't. If I be shorn, then my strength will go from me, and I will become weak and be like any other woman. She must drink it. Will it cure? It helps sometimes. <laughs> Nothing cures. <laughs> All she wanted to do was help. Need a bite of food, neither. I never thought I'd be thankful for an empty belly. Yeah. Fact of the matter is, Morgan wouldn't let us near any of the other wagons. Morgan. Yeah, I think I'll go up and see how Sarah is. She wasn't feeling too well before. Yes? May I come in? Just a minute. Are you wearing that? Please. It's not your shame. Sarah, not too many hours ago, you said that it seemed as if we were old friends. But you won't let us treat you like an old friend. You know what I'd like you to do? I'd like you to stay here with us until you know exactly what you want to do. I can't stay. I just keep thinking what's happening back there. Sarah, you need your rest. You need your sleep. Sleep? My own son died of cholera. I just keep thinking of those poor children. I told you we're going to have the doctor there in the morning. You don't understand even now. 
They'll send the doctor away. Now, what are you going to do? You going to take care of them all by yourself? Is that it? But I went through this with my baby. I'm the only one there who knows what to do. All right, then I'll go with you. No, you can't. I'm going alone. No, no, I'll go with you. I'm afraid what they'll do to you. All right. No matter if you go alone or with me, the first thing you're going to do is get some sleep. Understood? <sighs> Sarah's fault. I tried to warn you. Hasn't she taken any of the boiled water? No, it's no use. It won't help. It, it, it's helped Essie, just as Sarah. I see it wasn't enough what we done. Sarah is a witch. There is no witch. There was sickness in Orianne, and everything that's gone wrong after that mm -hmm. just, just went wrong, that's all. Uh, why is it? The sign, it shouldn't be that I die. It shouldn't be. Boy, Emma is right. Sarah is a witch. She is. from here while you can. It's too late. They don't want any of your help. I must try, Willem. I have to make them understand. Don't you see? They don't want to listen to you. They'd rather live and die with their ignorance. Why don't you leave us be? Get out of our camp. She's helped Essie, I tell you. She's helped her. Please, listen to me. The cholera can be stopped if you will just listen. Surely you can do that much. What harm can it do? Oh! She's just come to help you. You poor fool. Witch! My wife is dead. Don't you believe me when I tell you she was sent here by Satan to destroy us all? What can we do? There's only one thing that we can do if we are to get out of here alive. No, stop it! You can't do this! You can't! Nothing can save you now, Sarah. Daughter of Satan, you must die. This is murder! You're all murderers!
Come on, stop it. Stop it. Get her. She has to die. It's the only way. Don't you understand? Don't cut her loose. Brethren, they must be stopped. She is the daughter of Satan and must be destroyed by fire. Follow me. Please, forgive me. Save us. Save us. Mercy. Mercy for my flock. Who else wants to die now? Huh? Who else wants to die? It's easy, you know. All you have to do is close your ears to what Sarah's been trying to tell you. You've been doing a lot of praying around here. How about getting down on your knees to her? She's the only one who can help you. Please, trust me. have to do, Miss Sarah. We have to boil everything, clothes, bedding, utensils. It stops the spread of the infection. But right now... Ben, I'll need your help more than ever now. Of course. Can you let us have some... Big iron kettles, some bedding, whatever you can spare. I'll get them right away. We'll be in your debt as long as we live, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> well, I, I hope you'll be very happy together. And I hope that you find what you're looking for in California. Oh, thank you, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> Well, time has come, hasn't it? Mm -hmm. If I would, if I really tried to persuade you to. made me feel so wanted. Well? They want me now too, Ben. And more than you. They need me. You've made me feel like a Thank you. 